Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, I wanted to talk about a story that happened three years ago on this very day, which is November 13th for me, and it will be November 14th for you, but this weekend was the anniversary of this cool little story, and I saw it on my Facebook, so I thought I'd tell the story of it, and I also wanted to tell the story anyway, so what better time to tell it than the anniversary of this actual story. So, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So in 2013, I started going to a school in Nashville. I moved down there the day after I graduated from high school in May, and I moved to Nashville and ended up going to college down there. I went to the Art Institute of Nashville, which I love. Everyone there is so amazing. All my teachers were so amazing, and it was just an overall great experience. Unfortunately, I only got to go for one semester or one quarter because they have a quarter system, but um, I really, really enjoyed the one quarter that I was there, so it was really, really fun, and I really, really enjoyed it. So, during that time, I had a professor who was super, super awesome. His name is Saul Zonana. We called him Mr. Z because nobody could pronounce his last name, but if you look up Saul Zonana on Google, you will find out that he was in some pretty cool bands. Um, throughout his time. He now, I think, has his own band. He has written and recorded his own music. If you search on Spotify or iTunes, you will also find him. He also has a YouTube kind of channel that I will link in the description, but he doesn't upload on a regular basis. They're just kind of like guitar music videos. So, I had Saul Zonana, aka Mr. Z, for my Intro to Music Business class, and that class, first of all, was so awesome. We had so much fun in that class, and I learned a, a lot in that class about behind the scenes of the music business and um, about certain contracts and brand deals and um, all kinds of different stuff. And that class is part of the reason why I know so much about the music business now. It's also part of the reason why I don't watch American Idol or anything Simon Cow is related too, because I learned about the kind of stuff that he does with his artist and with his shows and the 360 deals that are just kind of ridiculous and just all the stuff that Simon Cowell does and I don't agree with it no more once I found out so I don't watch it but that is not the point of the story. The point of the story is because my professor was in so many bands he knew a lot of people around town and um, we got to interview a couple different people one of them is Jeff Bell. I'm sure most of you guys haven't heard of Jeff, but he does voiceovers for commercials. He's done Ford commercials. I believe he, he did Power Blocks on Spike TV. I believe he did a uh, King's Dominion or Six Flags. One of them, I will also link Jeff's website down below so you can see him, but all those commercials and those really cool, deep voices that you hear, um, some of them Jeff Bell did. Of course, there's other voice actors and voice um, people as well, but he also does that, and it's really, really cool to watch him. So basically, my professor knew of him and had been working with him and working in his studio and all this stuff. So my professor asked Jeff, like, would you like to come to my class and let my class interview you so that they can find out more about this specific part of the industry? And so he did. He came and we got to interview him. And I have videos of these very moments, so I will insert them. But basically he came to our school. We got together in one of the... Um, labs at my school and we got to sit down and interview him and he did some of the voices for us which I have on recordings. He also told us how he got started in it which you guys can look up on his website and how he started in radio and all those like buzzer noises and weird different noises that you hear during um like a commercial or during a radio um broadcast or anything like that he can do and has done. So um he, we got to interview him, we got to find out more about his story, listen to the voices that he did, yada yada yada, and here are the interviews that we did. And also keep in mind, I was in class, so I wasn't really supposed to be on my phone taking these videos, which is why they're kind of not angled right and why you can't really hear very well, but here are the videos, so I hope you guys enjoy them. So we're going to ask Jeff some questions, and 
then when this is all over, you guys are going to ask Jeff some questions, okay? So, um, my first question is just so these guys understand, and by the way, my, my, what I'd like to do is talk about what we just saw, but then kind of go back and talk about where it all started. Um, but for now, so when you do these, can you explain to these guys who probably hasn't, haven't seen it actually happen? How does it happen? How does, it all, how does that all come together? You're not watching video, or are you? Or you? I'm completely blind to the video when I do this. You know, we have a unique thing with the Ford stuff where they will sometimes cut a track. Uh, someone in the building, the sales rep, or whoever will cut a track as a guide track, and they will actually edit the video to that vocal track. So when they come to me on ISDN lines, I have to match up to that track and read along with it so that the edits stay in the same place. Even if they change the script slightly, I have to sort of lock in on that. So they'll dial me up on ISDN lines, and they'll send the feed down one line, and they'll take that feed on the other line. And it's, it's, it's kind of like seeing where you, I use one side of the headphones, so I always have my own reference myself. And then I will read along with their track. And whether they have edited out breaths or not, they don't care. They want me to read it with the, with the breathless track. <laughs> so you have to learn to manage your error. But I will just read along and sort of lock in to that other track so that they're. <laughs> I kept getting better gigs, you know, and I just kept looking around. And did you move around now because of gigs at radio, jobs at radio? So yes, that is exactly right. Well, first of all, I was in Arkansas. Have you been to Arkansas? No. Yeah. First thing you think when you get there is get me out of here. How do I get out of this place? So I was actively it's speaking. Kind of, yeah, it's beautiful, but there's not a whole lot going on in Arkansas. <laughs> it's to be moving around and being in the same areas for so long ever affect the accent. When I was a kid, when I was 15, I moved from Arizona to Missouri. And the people in Missouri had such a horrifying accent. <laughs> it was thick and, and bizarre to me. And I just decided then, at 15, I'm not going to have an accent. I'm not going to say y'all. I just chose not to. It's not going to be me. So I never really picked up any of that. And I can pick up accents. But I, I've never really picked up any regional dialect of any kind because I've always been on the radio. Um, during, during the time when you was, uh, you know, doing the whole radio thing, uh, were you still doing music at all? Were you still thinking about music? Or were you just I didn't really have the opportunity to do much music, so I'd always play guitar and stuff at home and, and do a funny song for the radio or a bit, you know. But I didn't really, I wasn't really in music circles that much. I was pretty focused on radio and they did a lot of production, a lot of commercials. So, so. you work, so you working in the studio didn't really enhance like your music career much anything. Like, did you promote Not yourself to? Later. Okay. After I'd been in radio for a while, I met some buddies and we started to do music on the side. So sometimes at the radio station, but radio gear is not necessarily that Today, because of software, and everything is software based, that's a little, that's kind of fun. And if you know, if you have basic editing skills or, you know, good editing, editing skills on digital software, you can, you can work in radio, as opposed to back when The thing about reading commercials and scripts and stuff is that it's in the eyes and out the mouth and it never glances across the brain, so I don't have any memory. <laughs> if you ask me at the end of the read what I was talking about, I cannot tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of times, that make no sense at all to me. You just have to put them together, like disclaimers and things. Can you read the last line of that? Employee's signature is only required in the event of an adjustment that will reduce the employee's pay. <laughs> <laughs> Without glasses, even. <laughs> All right. Well, so now you're in. You're, you're traveling around, going from radio to radio. Okay. Fair enough. And now. You're 
commercials, or how did you transition into knowing that there was some money in that part of the world? Well, I had a, a buddy who does production for radio stations, and puts all the zaps and, and noises and stuff into radio station imaging, is what it's called. And that's the stuff that goes on between songs and before and after commercials and that sort of stuff. KGRR, the coolest rock station ever, that kind of stuff. So we actually started with fax machines, sending out faxes and trying to find radio stations to hire us both. So I would do the voiceover and he would build the stuff. And then we just started picking up radio stations. Why I still had a job at a radio station. So I was Oh, that's, that's a lot. They do. Yeah, that's what we got. How about the power block stuff? Well, I do extreme 4 by 4 and trucks on power block on Spike TV. That was an audition I did because they wanted something extreme. So I'm like, well, I'll do something silly. And now I've been doing it for like eight years. Every day I get another script where I have to do that silly. You guys know that show? Yes. Yes. Yeah, charts. And that's actually produced right here in Franklin. Uh, the, the whole thing, all those shows. In fact, uh, one of the guys from Trucks is my new neighbor downtown. Huh. But those guys have a full blown shop in Franklin somewhere. Huh. With all, all those, uh, everything you see on the screen, there's no one else like that there. That's why they're always doing you know, mud runs and stuff in Tennessee and Tennessee State Fairgrounds and stuff like that. So, right here. so um, so yeah, you're on the radio, you've already made up a whole bunch of silly boys. And board spots and cool spots and stuff, but I haven't done any of it yet. But, gosh, I think it's going to a serious point. <laughs> <laughs> So you're so you do voiceovers and like that. Do you also like engineer and 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 like produce and all type of stuff too, like inside the studio? I can. Um, in the last couple of years, I haven't really touched the gear. Now I've forgotten how it works entirely. So they, <laughs> these guys don't even let me in my own studio now because <laughs> I'm terrible. Out. But yeah, I've I've always one of the things I gravitated to immediately was being in the production room because live radio is terrifying. So. Because people hear you screw up, you can't take it back. So I've been building commercials, and I've been like the guy, you know, the production guy, the big voice guy who could build the best spots. So most of the radio stations have been that. So I can still do it. I'll teach you now. What's like uh, the most memorable commercial you've done, or like your favorite, or the funnest one you've done? The Mustang spots that we heard up here, where I had to really get in that deep part of guys, because I didn't have that voice when the session started. And I actually was about to fire myself from that gig. <laughs> and I, the guy was real patient with me, and I just had to figure out how to drop my voice back deep down in the back of my throat. And so that was really kind of, because of the challenge of it, figuring out, because I was really like, dude, I'm not your guy. I can't do that. I don't know what you're talking about. And I just had to really relax my body and just sort of find that place in the back of my throat. So did, that, did you listen to a lot of Barry White records when you? Barely <laughs> 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 White, man. <laughs> uh, you were saying about sending out resumes and demo tapes and stuff like that. Did your tapes consist of like just previous spots you've done, or did you ever like write original things to pitch to people? Well, in when I was trying to get on the radio. We would roll air checks, and a lot of radio stations would have a skimmer on your mic, so when you hit the microphone, the cassette tape would start, so that you could skim your voice only, and and then you would take that tape. Well, some of these radio stations didn't. You would have to just get your own boom box and record your breaks off the radio. So what you want to do is put together a bunch of your breaks, a couple of minutes of you being on the radio. So I would go. And so when we got done interviewing him, he invited us all out to his studio, which is called Nashville Song Studio. For those of you who live in Nashville, it's right off of Broadway, right beside the Hard Rock. It's really, really cool, really awesome. Um, but they were having a songwriters night where they were inviting songwriters or just people 
who were interested in the business to come in and, you know, look at a studio, learn about a studio, learn what it looks like, learn a little bit more about the recording process and all that different stuff. So I asked my dad's girlfriend at the time and her daughter if they would go with me because I really didn't want to go by myself. I really didn't know my way around Nashville well enough. I didn't want to be in downtown Nashville by myself. So they agreed to go with me. They also like the music industry and they both are fantastic singers. So it's on the second or third floor so we got in the elevator, got up, and as soon as the doors opened Jeff was standing there and he greeted me and gave me a hug and said he was happy that I came and asked me, you know, is anybody else from your class coming? Um, all that kind of stuff. He offered me a drink. I was underage at the time so I couldn't drink but he offered me a drink. He told me that they had like little um, appetizers and little like stuff set out for us food wise and so we ate a little bit and then we went into the studio and got to walk around and and explore everything so we walked around his studio for a good little while and just kind of checked out the place and looked at it and took some pictures and all that kind of stuff and so we were standing there and I walked into the actual um I, I walked into one of the actual booths there and my professor was there and he greeted me and told me he was glad I came and then my professor who was sitting in front of the soundboard at the time told me he said hey are do you any of you guys want to record something real quick like we can record something and I can send it to your email and I was like seriously okay let's do it so because I was the student at the time he asked me if I wanted to be in the booth I really didn't want to be in the booth I don't I don't consider myself a singer, so uh, I didn't want to sing. It was in the vocal booth, so I didn't want to sing, but I asked my stepsister if she wanted to sing because she really enjoyed singing. So both my dad's girlfriend and her daughter stepped into the booth and recorded a little bit of a Nadelle song, which I have a clip of right here, and it was really, really cool. And it's so awesome, and my professor was kind of teaching me little things on the soundboard to do, and telling me, you know, turn this knob, push this button, do this. And he kind of got to teach me while they were also doing it. And so it was so cool. My, um, obviously my dad's girlfriend's daughter was very, very happy about this. Um, she was so excited. She was a little nervous at first, but she got the hang of it. And it was just so cool when we hung out and stayed for... A little bit longer and watch some other people record some songs and then they sent them to our email and then eventually we had to leave a little bit early but it was just such a great time Jeff was awesome he treated me like family his his staff at his studio is so awesome again it is called Nashville song studio I will leave all his links down below <laughs> website for Jeff Bell, the website for um, his song studio, and all the other links for him, but it was just such an awesome experience. I had never, ever, ever been in a professional studio like that, and I thought it was just such an awesome, awesome experience, and I was so, so happy about it. So, um, yeah, we ended up going and having a really, really great time, and I was so thankful for Jeff for the opportunity to get to come into his studio and get to hang out and get to record and learn a little bit more about the music industry and how music is made and it was just such a beautiful beautiful studio as well if you guys ever get the chance to go to any of their open nights or any of their songwriting sessions or anything that they have there I really 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 encourage it I will insert some pictures of the studio and the booth. I think it's just so, so awesome that he gave me that opportunity. And it was just such a life-changing kind of opportunity. It made me feel so super at home. And I knew when I was there that this is what I wanted to do for a living. Unfortunately, it came to an end. Um, I'm not in school right now for music, but I still wholeheartedly believe that I am meant to do something in the music industry, whether that's behind the soundboard or in front of the microphone or on stage, either way, I just believe so hard that I am meant to do something in this industry. And
and I credit a lot of that to my professor, Mr. Z, and also to Jeff for giving me that opportunity to kind of learn a little bit more and to find out what it was really like and whether it was for me or not. So I'm so thankful, Jeff, if you ever see this, or Mr. Z, I really, really appreciate that opportunity, and I'm so, so excited to be sharing these videos and this opportunity and this story in general. So, so thank you guys for such a great opportunity. And for the rest of you guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the clips that I included in this. I hope you guys enjoyed this little story. It's not such a big story to most people, but it really means a lot to me. And I think it's a pretty cool story. I got to hang out with Jeff Bell, and he's like on TV and does commercials and all this cool stuff. And I'm just, it's just so cool to me. And I hope you guys enjoyed this story as much as I enjoyed the opportunity and as much as I enjoyed telling you guys this story. And until next time, go subscribe and look at my other videos and all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in... I wish I could do like a cool noise like Jeff would do at the end of this video, but I can't. So I will just see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!